Okay, good afternoon, everyone. Please find yourself a seat. Uh, I'm Stefan Bengtsson. I'm the president of Chalmers, and I'm very happy to see so many of you here this summer day. We even have the normal summer weather uh, to come here to discuss artificial intelligence and uh, the plans we have at Chalmers, uh, what we are doing at the moment, and, uh, but in particular what we are planning to do at Chalmers, but also to do in collaboration with, with a lot of our partners. So looking at uh, Chalmers today, we could, could see that we are within a number of departments has activities w which are applying artificial intelligence for, for various applications and using it in the research. Uh, and of course, uh, as a university, we are all, always striving at increasing the quality in our education and research and as being a technical university and in particular being Chalmers, we also try to do this all the time together with industry and all of our other partners. We could clearly see if you talk about artificial intelligence that there is a need for us to ramp up the activities and we have discussed that for a while. Uh, we need to strengthen our efforts, we need to build larger environments and in particular, we need to provide a larger volume of education in the field. And we could clearly feel the demand from the outside where, uh, where companies ask for more engineers, uh, hopefully tomorrow or today already. Uh, and so we need to increase that. But we also feel internally uh, force from our students, many of our students, independently of what educational program they follow, they would like to have a project course or a course in machine learning or, or in, in any related areas there. So we are trying to adapt to that internally, which of course is, is a challenge when it changes very rapidly because of, uh, we need to recruit more teachers, we need to recruit more researchers, but we're trying to adapt to that. Looking more nationally, one may say that there is a number of things happening in the AI field at the moment, and a lot of things have happened uh, the last year, the last or the, this academic year, you may say, uh, from, from summer until now, although the discuss, discussions have been there earlier. But there is also a lot of things happening in many other fields, as we know, uh, and, and uh, mentioning a few others, we could mention the uh, development in electric, electromobility that is taking place in Gothenburg now with, with the new laboratories that now seems to come in place. At Chalmers we could of course appreciate the, the large investment from the Wallenberg Foundation in quantum technology which we are directing etc. But in all of this we, we see the digitalization and, and the artificial intelligence. And in the landscape there is a number of things happening and, and you know most, most, most of it of course but I will anyway mention it. Uh, of course, the uh, Knut and Alice Wallenberg Foundation increase of the WASP budget is extremely important here. Uh, another billion kron over 10 years to be invested in uh, basic research connected to artificial intelligence. A month back, or a little bit more than a month now, maybe we have uh, had the Minister of, of Digitalization, uh, Mr. Peter Eriksson, here in Gothenburg, presenting uh, investment or, uh, and plans for a collaborative arena and data factory here at, right here at Lindholm Science Park, uh, which will be supported by Vinova funding and there will be a program defined, the way I understand it, there will be a program defined where, where we could apply for, for funding to collaborate on this arena. Um, the last week we got another decision from the government and that is support to start up continuing education uh, in, in the AI area, um, which uh, is coordinated, these efforts are coordinated by Chalmers, but it's also six other uh, universities, uh, large Swedish universities linked into this uh, investment, among them, University of Gothenburg. Uh, and uh, the idea is that we rapidly will ramp up the uh, continuing education efforts in AI, where, where the, the demand is very large. And this first phase is, is planned for two years and, and uh, the way we look at it is a ramp up where there will be other universities linked and we will 
a Chalmers uh, direct this to a large extent through uh, our company for continuing education, Chalmers Professional Education. We are planning new master's programs at Chalmers and you will also listen to, to a little bit about that during the day. But maybe I'm mostly happy to be able to stand here and, and, and present uh, another uh, very important step taken. Uh, a decision that was taken by the foundation that the board of the foundation that owns Chalmers University of Technology yesterday, just before five o'clock in the afternoon. So we have been very rapid on putting up this seminar, as you understand, uh, to invest uh, over up to 10 years, uh, more than 300 million Swedish krona in AI research and education at Chalmers with the idea that we are we are connecting this and, and increasing this effort through collaborations with other actors. And our aim here, and you will, of course, have a lot of information on that uh, later on this afternoon. And the, our idea here is, of course, to coordinate all these various activities that we take part in, because there is a huge opportunity now combining the, the uh, BASP program, the efforts there, with, with the, what will happen here at Lee Norman Science Park with our own uh, increased activities in the field for research and education of the highest possible quality. So this is the landscape, uh, and, and it's, I'm, I'm uh, very, very happy uh, to see all of you here to discuss this and, and giving us at Chalmers the opportunity to present what is ongoing. And we look forward to work together with all of you to, to realize this and, and really building a strong activity here in Western Sweden in this effort. So welcome everyone here for this afternoon uh, and uh, uh, I hope you will find, find uh, the uh, afternoon useful and that there will be good discussions. So again, welcome everyone. Thank you very much. I will now leave the stage for uh, Ivesha Sinkovic and Giuseppe Grisi, which have been uh, uh, being uh, active in, in coordinating the efforts behind this new investment from uh, um, uh, Chalmers Foundation, the Chalmers Center in Artificial Intelligence. Please, Ivica. Oh, thank you. Oh, thank you, Stefan. Uh, okay, so uh, as you said, so yesterday was a discussion and today uh, is this uh, seminar. Of course, we planned seminar much before. But not because we were so sure about the results, because we, we did some analysis, you know, based on the big data and that. So that was the result. Uh, uh, so this is the agenda for, for today. Uh, so we, uh, we would like to give uh, just an overview about this uh, proposal, uh, which uh, has the working name CHAIR, which means uh, CHAIR Art, uh, Artificial Intelligence Center. And after that, we will give uh, some uh, uh, different perspectives of these different initiatives around uh, AI, uh, some existing and uh, some which are like uh, coming. And at the end, there will be a panel discussion discussing like uh, more uh, like uh, um, technical uh, challenges and in general challenges and looking at the future. Uh, so, so before uh, uh, to start, uh, just uh, I would like to say that, uh, uh, okay, uh, there is like a big belief and expectation of AI. Uh, there is also a lot of uh, efforts needed uh, to make it happen and not many people are aware about that. So we just want to say that, that it requires a lot of efforts and it's so simple. And these are just small definitions which we, people are using and probably in the panel you also discussed that about. There is data science, uh, like uh, showing like uh, uh, different approaches based on data, uh, but there is this artificial intelligence, which means kind of machine intelligence in difference from natural intelligence, but that's a very general term. And specifically uh, in a uh, uh, recent period, people are talking about mach machine learning. So, so there are like, uh, these are like different terms. And uh, uh, so, uh, uh, when you talk about AI, there are also many other things which uh, uh, are required to make this uh, AI approach uh, successful. In particular, to make it su su successful in the big scale, like for the companies and uh, 
uh, production and so on. So it's a data science, computational science. There are different requirements on the system, system constraints. So it's related to data engineering, related to software engineering, uh, value of the data like accuracy, availability, but also trustworthiness, uh, ethical, e even ethical values. And of course, uh, domain knowledge when AI is used like a tool to achieve some uh, uh, results. So it's a quite complex uh, situation. But how the situation is in Sweden, so uh, Giuseppe will talk about that. <laughs> Thank you. Right, so uh, as Ivica said, uh, uh, through the discussion that we've had with companies, through, through discussion we, we have internally at Chalmers, and by looking at the international landscape, there's a well-recognized need for AI expertise. Uh, we see that because AI is really changing the engineering profession, right? We, we are slowly moving from a paradigm which is model-driven to a paradigm that is data-driven. Um, this, this need uh, requires to be addressed, and there are many initiatives across Sweden and internationally that are aimed at addressing this need of having expertise in, in AI, right? So we have, on the one hand, uh, research and innovation activities. We have the Wallenberg Initiative on AI. Uh, Dave will talk a little bit more about it, uh, which has the ambition to increase the volume of fundamental AI research in Sweden. We have uh, Vinova, who through the AI and Data Factory Arena Initiative will launch new applied programs related to AI. We have new startups. We have sizable activities within AI in all major companies we collaborate with and we interact with. And we also see the need to expand the collaboration with those companies towards new area that include and uh, orbitate around AI. On the educational side, uh, we have a government initiative on uh, permanent AI education. We have new AI and data science programs uh, being developed in most universities, including Chalmers and Gothenburg University, and we will also hear a little bit about this later on today. And there's been a Vinova uh, coming out with a report suggesting that although perhaps Sweden is right now not the epicenter of AI, uh, Sweden is perfectly positioned to become one of the leading countries for de development and, and the use of AI. So those are, those are the positive trends that we see. Uh, we have a lot of uh, research activities uh, at Chalmers that are related to the AI. This, this slide is by no means comprehensive. The point we want to make is that there's uh, AI core activity, AI applied activity uh, in many departments at Chalmers and in many centra and throughout many areas of advance at Chalmers with funding coming from many different sources, right? So what is it that we are lacking? Well, what we are lacking is that this research is still relatively low in volume and is definitely scattered. And we do not fully use the synergies that we could uh, actually exploit given the amount of complementary expertise that we right now have in Sweden. So we have a strong need and also the potential to increase our activities both in research, in education, and in innovation, and to come up with impact stories that are able to attract the industry, public sector, and societal interest towards our research. So, uh, motivated by all this consideration, uh, we started back in November, together with many of you, together with many researchers within the ICT community at large, to to think about, to ponder about the creation of a, of a Chalmers Center in Artificial Intelligence. And today, finally, uh, is the day where we know that this Chalmers will eventually happen. So it's a, it's a, it's a nice day for us. Uh, what, what are the objectives of this center? Well, we want to increase excellence. We want to make Chalmers an attractive place for top-class researchers in AI. We want Chalmers to be an attractive place for educating talents in AI, okay? And we want Chalmers to be a natural, strong, attractive uh, partners for society, for our industry within the AI uh, environment, within the AI area. Okay, so how do we plan to achieve it, uh, to achieve these goals? Where 
our suggestion is to invest on three separate tracks. One track is to strengthen our core AI research. And this will be done by identifying and supporting a set of priority areas which we want to strengthen to recruitment at various levels, from PhD to perhaps faculty level. Uh, we want to identify and establish strong research activities in strategic areas, uh, looking at the Gothenburg area, automated transport, uh, automated factories, health engineers come up as natural suggestion, but of course the list might be much longer. Um, we want to provide coordination, much needed coordination with other AI-related initiative in Sweden. So we heard about WASP, we heard about the government initiatives, uh, we heard about the AI and Data Factory Arena. There are many international activities to which we could participate if we are able to synergetically exploit our complementary uh, abilities and competence here at Chalmers. Uh, we have a much needed coordination with data science infrastructure at Chalmers and in Sweden in general. And the third track is to support educational activities through the educational areas at Chalmers. So here we are thinking about supporting AI-related master and bachelor programs. We are thinking about PhD school, series of interdepartmental seminars, and of course, continuous education. So the presence of a, charm, a chair would naturally support all those activities. Ibiza. Yes, that's uh, empty. Okay, this is the context. No, you have to <laughs> click a bit more. Uh, yes. <laughs> But there is government with, with, with the investment. Uh, of course, you have seen there are, there are so many uh, initiatives and, uh, uh, okay, we are looking from a Chalmers perspective in this case and uh, particular research uh, related uh, and other activities related to AI. And of course, we have this big uh, national initiative, uh, uh, WASP, uh, which we have mentioned several times, WASP and uh, uh, WASP uh, AI in particular. But there is also, okay, this comes here, the government with uh, uh, this uh, AI investments we, we, we have just heard about that and uh, enormous interest from industry. You know, I never seen in my life, and I have lived quite a long, <laughs> uh, so such uh, a big focus and interest on one, one uh, phenomena in industry. And that, that's really true because a lot of things really can be changed. So, so it's really, uh, big opportunity and of course it's a lot of uh, risk uh, so it's uh, it's very natural that uh, companies are so interested to come uh, as soon as possible uh, and of course uh, there are other uh, universities uh, Swedish universities and of course the international universities and uh, uh, the idea is uh, okay uh, at Chalmers to have together uh, uh, coordinate and uh, integrate these activities to, to achieve a synergy. You know, this is very important. And related to that, also what you, uh, yes, what, what is written here, related to that, okay, defining this as a chair, as a that cent center, and in particular, we see uh, like a great opportunity to uh, work together and build up the, the uh, uh, environment, the research environment, the collaboration environment with uh, AI and data factory. And uh, maybe uh, some can think, okay, there's ki kind of duplication of activities, but it's actually not. It's, uh, it's uh, complementary and, uh, uh, and uh, uh, gives, it will give more synergy. For example, data factory will be uh, focused on uh, applications part and uh, managing data while, while chair, Chalmers part will be general research and a lot of uh, 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 cooperation with industry and in this, this forum. So, so this is kind of uh, uh, the context in which we uh, build, we, we build this uh, 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 center for AI. Uh, and then uh, the last thing, maybe the, the most important, is uh, uh, showing the, the, the budget or the funding, how, how does it look like. Uh, so there are uh, several players here, and uh, the Chalmers Foundation is uh, coming with uh, uh, 300, our proposal was 317 millions, and that was accepted uh, during 10 years. 
Uh, in addition to that, there will be uh, funding from Chalmers, dedicated funding from Chalmers itself uh, to, through the area of advances and, and uh, education. And then uh, uh, with cooperation with WASP, of course, we would like to coordinate that and uh, together with, uh, uh, with industry. Uh, so, so we will build uh, this consortium in total. Uh, it's about, uh, uh, now I have to remember, it was about 35 million per year uh, uh, or in total about uh, uh, 700 million during uh, uh, next 10 years. So this is quite a big and focused uh, investment. Uh, so uh, since uh, this AI is spread out at Chalmers in many different departments, uh, it is uh, area of advanced ICT which will coordinate this. And uh, so we also think that these activities should be like really focused activities. So not like activity that one uh, researcher professor has like 10%, but it should be it should be really, if you are working in that part, it's like kind of at least 50% uh, during particular period. Uh, there should be postdocs, investment in postdocs, and also guest researchers, and that will be in combination with the companies and with uh, uh, international uh, universities. Uh, and also uh, working together with the experts and specialists from industry, and of course, including PhD students which will be a member of the center and funding that, and uh, uh, master students. So this is approximately uh, the idea how it will be built. And of course, there will be kind of structure with the director and scientific advisory board and steering uh, uh, group, uh, faculty members, associate members, and then students and postdocs and guest researchers. Uh, so uh, our activity plan to the end uh, during the, uh, this year to build up, prepare everything for the start and start from the next year, uh, this uh, center from the beginning of next year and come up uh, before 22 uh, to the full, uh, full of functions, all func functions which we, we are planning. And uh, uh, beyond that uh, 22, it will continue. So uh, we believe that already in a few years we can achieve we can put a challenge on the internationally recognized AI research center and education center. And at the same time, of course, the Swedish industry is, 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 is the one which is leading in, uh, in taking in new technologies which takes advantages of AI. So, so this is approximately the plan for the center, A center in the, at Chalmers, so, Chalmers, so this chair. Uh, okay, uh, and now we will uh, look at some uh, other related uh, activities. So we start with education. So Jan and uh, Richard will say a little bit about yes. the education. While we part. are setting this up, are there questions? We have five minutes. Ah, questions. okay, yeah? okay. Yeah, if you have some questions related to, to this. Yes. Uh, yes. So the question was uh, idea about the budget, how, how the budget will be divided between these uh, three areas. So, uh, uh, so the emphasis, uh, budget-wise, is on, on the research part. So education, uh, it's it's a support, but there will be also other resources uh, for for the education. You will hear just now. Uh, and then, uh, uh, when you look at this, uh, uh, like foundational research and applied research, maybe starting points are like maybe 50, 50 percent. Maybe the applied research will, will increase because it will also attract uh, other fundings which we're expecting, uh, of course, to increase this uh, budget. So, so, but we want also to keep one part uh, with, the, with the, 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 the foundational research to keep uh, consistency of the applied research. Uh, 
Yes, uh, uh, you, you know Jan Smith uh, has been working with many, many different things in computer science and uh, starting from very formal and then to more practical things, I think, and <laughs> you, you are leading yes. now this uh, for education. Yes. Uh, yes, my background uh, is, uh, is um, computer science uh, since many years and uh, I've for the last, in fact, 12 years, I've also been dean for the I IT faculty at the University of Gothenburg, so I'm closely connected, but basically I'm a professor at Chalmers. And in one week's time, I'm leaving the GIL, um, this dean, so I, I will concentrate on things like this. Uh, so, um, well, it is in Swedish. I will soon translate it, for those of you who can't understand it. <laughs> but, uh, so... There has happened a lot of things um, here. As you heard from Evit, it was just in November that I started this idea uh, uh, of share and get funding from Chalmers Foundation. And here is another thing which started about the same time. Uh, what happened was that um, industry was very active to get a good ecosystem around AI here, at Lindholm especially. And Senuity was really uh, taking the leading part there. And, and, uh, I was quickly involved in a lot of meetings and there were a lot of ideas what would happen here. It should be something really big and so on. And contacts were soon up with, with the government. And um, Stefan Bengtsson was also active in, the hair, in, in this. And uh, uh, when we had contact uh, primarily with uh, the, um, the Ministry of Education, but also with the Näringsdepartement and a few others, it, it crystallized out one thing that one should be able to do was around continuous education. That was something which one was the government was very interested in. And, and also in parallel there were things going on with, with something like this, uh, which now has become this uh, data factory, which we will hear about, uh, hear about later. So they, they all uh, originated, I would say, started all this discussion in, um, in November, and this was one of the outcomes. And what happened when we, when we um, started uh, around this was that um, uh, all these seven uh, rectors of the following universities, they were, uh, they were meeting uh, uh, with the government. Uh, I don't remember when the first meeting was, but it was uh, early this year. And we were, uh, and soon it was, it was came out that these were the, the, the universities that one wanted to s start with. Chalmers, Goth University of Gothenburg, KTH, University of Linköping, Lund, Umeå and Örebro. So it was really governed by, by, uh, by the Ministry of Education. So these are the WASP universities together, uh, and mainly that. Uh, there are, uh, GIE is not part of WASP, but... Um, came into this too, and, and it really had a focus on, on education. Or a bro has a small but very strong group in, in AI. So, um, so we formed a, a working group very quickly, and, and uh, we put up uh, suggestions what we wanted to happen, and we had short term and long term, and long term we wanted, of course, a lot of money to enhance education in general in Sweden around AI, and could start with a with a continuous um, education, foot och vidareutbildning. And it was not clear what should happen. It was a little bit chaotic, I think. We didn't know really what was happening. We got, uh, I wouldn't say conflicting answers from the uh, from uh, the government, but they were very interested. And, and um, um, so there was one meeting with the rectors, and uh, we revised uh, um, our document around this for a second meeting. And in both cases, all the rectors appeared in Stockholm at, uh, at uh, the ministry, which I think they were very impressed by. I mean, I don't know if that ever has happened before that such a group really has been working with the same group. So I think they were, they, that was part of why they became interested. Also, they were talking at the start that they wanted a specific uh, physical place for this, which we didn't want. We wanted to have something uh, uh, virtual to, uh, to um, fix this. Uh, 
I mean, after all, we are living in a digitalized world, so why shouldn't we try to, uh, to have a digital uh, um, place for this? And it seemed like they bought all these things. Uh, and, and, um, but it was not until last week that we got uh, a decision from, from uh, uh, the government about this. So let's just say here, um, well, I didn't translate this. AI Sweden, a national initiative for education and competence in artificial intelligence, for those of you who didn't get it. Um, because I will continue a bit in Swedish because I'm quoting uh, this uh, um, decision from the Swedish state and I surely don't want dare to translate anything from official from the Swedish state. So let's see. So what are they saying? And this was uh, a week ago, last Thursday. They wanted to see two things happen. There is one competence utvecklings insats in AI about competence within AI for, for all of Sweden. So that was one track they wanted. And they wanted us to establish a knowledge platform in AI, which, uh, yes, it's not very clear what this really is, but I suppose that the background was that we had uh, suggested this of a virtual organization. And, uh, uh, and it took a long time to get this decision, mainly because they wanted to give us money immediately, and that's not too easy. Uh, uh, they need some time. So they were working together, several of, of the ministries. And in the end, the decision last week was exactly what we had uh, asked for, precisely as chair, who clearly got exactly what they were asked for. Perhaps we have asked for too little, I don't know. But, but it came out with 40 millions, for, from, for this year and next year. And uh, uh, it's, it's split equally between uh, the two years. So, I mean, we, we probably couldn't uh, work with more money on that on these extremely quick uh, uh, schedules here. So these are the two parts that's mentioned in, in this uh, agreement with the government. So let's see what they are saying. So this is from the uh, agreement between Chalmers and the Swedish state, because Chalmers is coordinating uh, this effort. And uh, as I said, I don't dare to uh, translate this into English, um, but this with the competence platform, I think it is, this is taken directly from the document. It's a very short document, uh, and here is one of the main part of it that we should Kompetensutvecklingsatsen ska bygga vidare på eller komplettera pågående initiativ och kraftsamlingar inom området artificiell intelligens och ska framgöra, framgöra fördjupa kunskap om artificiell intelligens inom både näringsliv och offentlig sektor för att skapa förutsättningar för stärkt konkurrenskraft och utvecklad välfärd. Detta bör ske genom utveckling och anordnande av utbildning på högskolenivå. Utvecklingsarbetet ska ske i dialog med relevanta organisationer och näringsliv i det omgivande samhället. Of course, so we had a meeting this Monday, the first meeting when we know the conditions uh, in, uh, in Stockholm uh, with a um, few people from each of the seven universities. And we also had Anders uh, Jörne staying there from the, uh, the Ministry of Education who really had been working with this text. So of course we start asking him what, what does these things mean and what do you expect? And it was quite interesting because he said very clearly, you shouldn't look upon this as money that you get from Vinova or Vetenskapsrådet because um, this is coming directly from uh, the government and uh, we really don't uh, demand anything of you. <laughs> you are free to, to do what you do the best with this, roughly with this starting point and the money. Do the best you can do with it. Um, so this is about continuous education and of course, um, uh, for me, who is not very much inside this, it seems like an extremely ta difficult task to start up this so quickly. But we have got the uh, Chalmers professional uh, uh, who are very used to these things and they don't see any problems in starting this, they say. We, uh, I just trust them. And if you look around at these universities, uh, KTH also has a strong uh, organization in this. And they say, I think they said the same thing. It's, it's okay. Lund, also a fairly strong. The picture is a bit different from the other universities. Uh, but this is, it will be extremely interesting to see how we will succeed 
uh, in building up this and starting it uh, uh, here. And, and the next thing was then the kunskapsplattformen. Etablerat av kunskapsplattformen innebär att Chalmers och de övriga universiteten ska utveckla utbildningsinsatser samt relaterande verksamhet inom utbildning och forskning. Plattformen ska bygga vidare på samt komplettera pågående initiativ och kraftsamlingar vid lärosätena med koppling till området artificiell intelligens. Utförandet av plattformen ska göras så att flera universitet och högskolor efterhand kan ansluta sig. Of course, there were a lot of questions around this also to this journey. But it was the same answer. We, we, we do what you like. Just try to fix it. Uh, so it's very open. And he, was, he said he was a bit worried that uh, if we could handle such an, an open thing. But, uh, well, we said very clearly we are happy. The more open, the more freedom we have, the happier we are. So no problem with that. But of course, this is a real challenge to get this happening. So I, I see quite clearly that uh, this with continuous education, there will we succeed one way or the other. And this is, the, is a real challenge to get this together. Uh, I mean, we are seven universities, and it's not that easy to, to uh, cooperate on these, uh, these things. I think we have been very successful. We had a number of telephone meetings, roughly because we had a very tight schedule. And the first meetings were a bit tense, and in particular those who had close connecting with VASP, VASP was wondering what on earth is this? Is this something that's going to compete with VASP or what is it? But that, that was uh, released rather quickly and, and VASP really saw this as, as, as a complement to VASP, that we are complementary to each other. And of course VASP has um, uh, a big challenge in recruiting people and also a big challenge in uh, getting all these PhD student jobs. Of course, not in industry, but we also want to keep people in academia. We want to have position there. And of course, then we have to build up things around education, which is so crucial uh, in these things. So, um, well, this is just a week old, and uh, we have not really... Uh, we, have a, we had a very, very good meeting. This meeting in, in, in uh, Stockholm at, at KK was very, very good. People are very optimistic. So There's a very good atmosphere, which is necessary for this. But now we have to take this further, and we have to do things already before uh, the holidays, especially when it comes to uh, foot och vidare utbildning, and we have to think about what to do with this also. But um, yes, I think it's very exciting, and the process has been... Uh, I have no experience of this with the government and so on. It has been uh, a bit surprising at certain times, but, but uh, after all, very nice. So. Um, Yes, a few minutes for questions, if there are. Hello, yes. Yeah. Considering that you say that this is a quite new uh, topic, I would like to understand, are you going to uh, do benchmarking with the uh, former platforms and so forth in, in other areas. So you will have input about proceeding the, the process to shorten time to market for the products coming out of this uh, research and competence center. Uh, we have not been very explicit on, on uh, these things, but of course we want to connect. Uh, I mean, what we have been working hard with was to get this through, and we have focused on, on education, and we wanted from the start, we wanted to have money from for more long term in this for employing people. But this was clearly what the government could do now. And, and as I said, the platform, we had that idea abstractly in our text, but something which the government clearly liked. So we have to work on that. And, and uh, I'm really happy about uh, Chalmers Professional and, uh, and also these other who, who have a lot of experience in building up uh, things like that very quickly. And I think they are very happy about it because suddenly there are money coming directly into it, which they are not used to. They have to see that people pay the money and so, and suddenly they come money here. So we hope that that means the, a momentum for them too. And then all these other things will come up, I'm sure, in the process. Okay, thank you, oh. Jan. And uh, now we have uh, Richard Johansson who will talk about uh, 
other type of education is for uh, our students, but it's also about AI. Uh, yes, so uh, let me tell you about uh, uh, data, edu data science education at Chalmers. So, um, what is data science? Uh, well, first of all, of course, it's, uh, it's a buzzword. Uh, but what is this buzzword? So, uh, as Ivica told us previously, uh, data science can be seen as the, well, the implementation of computational models which have some sort of uh, data-driven component. Uh, so this particular buzzword has, uh, oh, sorry about that ugly picture. So uh, it has uh, some overlap with the other buzzword of artificial intelligence, but uh, it's not completely identical. So the, uh, the intersection between these two uh, areas uh, is mainly in the, uh, the sub-area uh, of machine learning. So uh, as we saw previously, uh, the development of uh, computational systems that uh, adapt themselves uh, based on uh, some data. And the uh, application of machine learning techniques in uh, areas such as uh, computer vision and uh, natural language and so on. <coughs> so, uh, so it has, for a, for a few years, uh, it has been recognized at, uh, at Chalmers, but also at the University of Gothenburg, that these are uh, important areas where, uh, where we are behind the curve. Uh, so there have been discussions for several years uh, in various constellations uh, and uh, uh, the consensus has, has been that there is already some, uh, there are already activities in the data science area, but uh, as we have been discussing previously, these activities are quite scattered. There are courses here and there at different departments. So, for instance, in the area of machine learning, I think there are at least five different uh, courses at four different departments uh, at Chalmers. <coughs> and uh, there are now several departments which want to start up education in, uh, in the data science area. So, GU uh, started to move a bit more quickly than Chalmers. So, uh, the University of Gothenburg started its own master program in, uh, in data science in, um, in last year, so it has been running now for one year. I am the uh, head of that uh, master program that is called Applied Data Science. Before we go to Chalmers, let me just take a quick look at the GU data science program. So this particular program is intended to be very broad. It is open to students from any kind of uh, background. <coughs> so the uh, the, the, the scaffolding of this program, is the, the skeleton is a set of, uh, of courses in mathematical modeling, machine learning, databases, and uh, big data, and so on. <coughs> uh, so what is the purpose of uh, having such a broad program? Well, the pur purpose is that uh, data science and machine learning are becoming a important uh, in several uh, fields of, of application, and this is, uh, this is a very widespread process, so we can imagine students coming from, let's say, the political science area, or psychology, or biology, uh, or anything, uh, and they want to uh, deepen their knowledge in the uh, uh, data science and machine learning areas, and they want to apply this to uh, the field where they come from. So this would be the program for, for that type of students. <coughs> uh, so the Chalmers program, uh, let's discuss what is the situation at Chalmers. So uh, Chalmers got started slightly more slowly, but finally, last week, uh, it was decided uh, that there is going to be a new master program in data science at Chalmers. <coughs> so uh, this decision was 
based on a proposal uh, that was written during the spring by a working group. Uh, so this working group consisted of uh, members from a different department at Chalmers. So I was the representative from the Department of Computer Science. We also had uh, uh, participants from the Department of Mathematics and from the uh, Space and Earth, Earth Sciences. <coughs> and uh, to advise us, we had a reference group uh, consisting of representatives from industry and from other departments. <coughs> so how would the new program be different from the program at the University of Gothenburg? So the, the, uh, the key difference is that the, while the GEO program is, is broad and it's widely accessible, the Chalmers program is uh, more, uh, more technically focused and uh, has a stronger uh, mathematical foundation. <coughs> So if we look at what um, at the different uh, types of um, bachelor educations at uh, Chalmers, so what are the uh, bachelor educations which could uh, proceed to take the uh, master in data science? So uh, the uh, bachelor educations which would find it most easy to get into this program are uh, technical mathematics, and uh, industrial e economy. So these programs uh, can get into the data science program just by taking their compulsory courses. So the uh, computer science and computer engineering programs will need to, uh, to take uh, an el elective course in, in, in uh, mathematics to uh, be eligible to the data science program. <coughs> and there are some other uh, programs which need to select an elective in, in um, uh, data structures. <coughs> so there are, there are still, even this is a fairly, let's say, technically focused program, there are uh, several um, bachelor programs which can uh, send their students to uh, this master program. <coughs> so uh, while the core uh, courses of the program are mainly in computer science and mathematics, uh, to get a full program, uh, of course, the student would need to select uh, some meaningful combination of elective courses. <coughs> so here, uh, so at this point, we just have a proposal for uh, some, let's say, packages of courses. And uh, it is important that we involve several departments here and that we don't get the usual silos. Uh, so we, we don't want uh, this to be a, a territorial uh, effort. So we, we would like to have meaningful packages which involve courses from several different departments. <coughs> so here are just a few examples that we have thought of. So uh, specializations in machine learning and algorithms or statistics or uh, large-scale distributed systems. Uh, computer vision, uh, and so on. So if you want more details, please come and talk to me afterwards. <coughs> so uh, what will happen now? So uh, as I said, the decision was uh, made just a few days ago. So the, uh, what, what is ongoing right now is the uh, planning to install the management of, of the program. So this will be done uh, in the beginning of the fall. So, so what I told you now was actually the proposal for the program. So when we have the, uh, the management in place, some of the details that I just mentioned might uh, actually change. But uh, the program will start already in 2019, so we need to get moving very quickly right now because it's just a year to get things in place. So uh, this is the current uh, uh, situation for uh, the uh, data science education at Chalmers. So thank you. <coughs> mm -hmm. Okay, uh, we have time for some questions. David, that. Yeah. So I was wondering a bit about uh, whether there are any connections between these two types of education. I mean, I understand that the first part is a continuing education for people that might want to 
we train from industry, and this uh, second part is our master's education at Chalmers, but to me it seems that there should be some um, coordination and uh, relation between the two, especially because I'm wondering about the, the first part. Uh, Jan said that that would be run by the Chalmers Professional Education. Uh, I'm sure that they are very well organized to uh, do the, uh, build the platform and so on, but I'm wondering about the, the content of the courses themselves. I mean, I, I don't think they would have that competence in-house in the content of AI education and courses, and that probably should come from the kind of courses and the uh, curriculum that is being developed in the data science that Rickard was talking about. So I think that it seems natural that there should be some connection between these two. Who will yeah, answer to that, yeah. <laughs> of course there must be, but the plans are not, um, where are you there, but, yeah. But, but there are no, as you can understand, it's a week ago, yeah. But I don't know if you should say something, Mikael, who are from Charmes Professional, how you are thinking. Yes, uh, Mikael Weimar from Charmes Professional Education. Yes, you're right. Uh, all the kind of educations that we do for professionals from Chalmers through Chalmers Professional Education engage Chalmers faculty in different ways, uh, either as teachers or as the gateways to the knowledge that we need. So you're right, we don't have the competence in-house to do this. And one of the things that we would like to try out is to see if we can combine master level education at Chalmers with continuing education, putting professionals and master students in the same classrooms. It requires some work on the format of a lot of courses. We think that the content and the level of knowledge provided in these courses are relevant for professionals, but the format needs to be worked on. Yes, and we plan to cooperate all the universities because they are at some places. Uh, Örebro have rather advanced uh, kind of education around that, and we hope to use that. But we will see what will happen. But that's really part of the, the idea of having these universities is really that we should use each other for, for the best possible way. Mm -hmm. There was a question. Just as a follow-up, so I've been co-teaching, teaching one class and co-teaching two other classes in the Applied Data Science program. Uh, we started with about 26 students, we have 50 students in the last classes, and we actually, the biggest problem was that about half our students are people in industry who are retooling for AI and for data science. And so we, I mean, the material obviously we teach is completely relevant to uh, the industry experience. Uh, the main problem we had so far is that we don't have the right format, namely normal classes for full-time students um, to, to uh, fill the needs and causing problems in uh, the, the schedules of uh, students. But otherwise, we've been doing exactly this, educating for industry already for the last year. Okay, thank you. Uh, some more questions? Okay, thank you very much. That was the education part. <laughs> and now we have the research part and David Sun starts. Thank you very much, uh, Ivica. Um, so my name is David Sands, uh, and I'm uh, by day a professor in computer science at the Department of Computer Science and Engineering at Chalmers. Uh, and uh, I'm tempted to say, and by night, I'm uh, Chalmers' representative in the WASP program, management of the WASP program. So uh, together with uh, colleagues Holger, Rebecca, and Dog, we're going to say a few words about WASP, um, explain not only what it is, but where we are today, and hopefully where we will be going in the coming years in relation to... And so I want to start with a bit of data. Um, uh, I want to give you some numbers. So let me start with 10 and a half. And uh, 1 billion, 815 uh, million, 117. And what do all those things mean? Well, uh, I hope to uh, illustrate what these numbers mean to us 
Um, they all relate to aspects of the WASP program. So what is WASP? Well, uh, WASP is a program which is today entitled the Vallenberg AI Autonomous Systems and Software Program. It's a research program of approximately 10 and a half year duration funded by the Knut and Alice Vallenberg Foundation, a foundation that are very well known, I think, uh, for funding basic, uh, excellent uh, research. It involves uh, the four big technical faculties uh, in Sweden, if you, if you want to call them that, uh, together with Umeå University as the initial partners in WASP. But it turns out that um, the initial funding estimate, which was 1.8 billion, uh, is out of date. Uh, so the initial funding was a direct donation from uh, the foundation of about 1.3 billion. Uh, and in-kind contributions from universities and industry together making uh, up 1.8. But since WASP started and since about um, six months ago, as you heard earlier, WASP has increased with an additional contribution targeted specifically at AI. So when we count in the industrial and university in-kind contributions together, we're at around three billion. So it's fair to say that the WASP research program is probably the biggest single research program that we've ever had in Sweden. And what's the vision? Well, as, with al as always with the Wallenberg Foundation, excellent research is at the center. And the focus is on technical areas which are deemed to be of central importance to Sweden. And they are, broadly speaking, autonomous systems, artificial intelligence, and software as a whole. And they're vitally important to Swedish industry, and so the main vision of WASP is to bring those research excellence in those areas to the ultimate benefit of Swedish industry. And what we intend to do is to build uh, a world-leading platform for both academic research and interaction with leading companies in Sweden. So how are we going about that? What are our main uh, weapons, so to speak? Well, a research program, of course, together with uh, a major dose of recruitment, both um, at senior and junior levels, primarily focused on recruitment internationally from outside of Sweden, bringing new brains into the uh, Swedish realm. This will be supported by, this has, is being supported by a new graduate school, a virtual graduate school spanning across Sweden and the WASP partners, which in our initial estimation would fund around 200 PhD students over the lifetime of WASP. I think it's probably more accurate to say around 300 uh, at the moment, of which uh, at least 100 will be industrial PhD students. That is to say, PhD students who are employees of a company where the company receives a direct contribution to fund 80% of that person's time uh, in order to work with universities on research topics. There will also be the development and this ongoing development of research and demonstration arenas where we can demonstrate uh, our research in close connection with industry, and these will be industry-led and there's also aspects of internationalization where we've been signing um, memoranda of, of understanding with uh, Stanford and Berkeley where we have ongoing exchange programs for WASP students as well as the um, uh, uh, NTU uh, University in Singapore, uh, the uh, top ranked uh, university in Asia. So the status of the graduate school um, is that we, uh, in their first batch of recruitments in the graduate school, we have around 
60 or so students, about half of them are industrial PhD students and half academic. And there's a number of affiliated PhD students which are not directly funded by WASP but are closely associated with WASP projects and uh, for whom the, uh, the, the uh, WASP program uh, will, will give the students additional uh, benefits. We also completed our second intake of PhD students of about the same size. So now we're at around 100 PhD students already today, uh, and we're about three years into the WASP program. Uh, and in, in more specific numbers, there were about 117 students, including the affiliated PhD students. So what is in WASP today? What kind of research can you find in WASP? Well, this picture gives uh, an approximate uh, overview of some of the topics that are uh, prominent in the WASP research. You'll see topics which are central to today's discussion, for example, AI. You'll also see topics which are very uh, fundamentally dependent on modern artificial intelligence, such as autonomous driving and more generally intelligent transport systems, as well as topics like localization um, and robotics, amongst others. So if you try and map the PhD students uh, to these topic areas, what you find is a, a fair distribution of topics uh, of students in many different areas. To make some sense of this and to provide uh, a little bit more of a navigatable landscape, we've clustered these into more specific topics uh, the WASP clusters, or what we now call the core WASP clusters. And they're the following areas. And these are all the areas that the initial WASP donation uh, has initiated, where, where we've initiated research based on the initial donation from WASP. And what you will see is that actually AI and machine learning in particular is already quite prominent here as one of these clusters, but also very central in a number of the other research areas. And in fact, if you look a bit more closely at, at uh, where students feel most at home, then uh, you see that um, automated transport and AI and machine learning are, are the two largest uh, by some considerable, considerable margin. Um, but what's exciting, I think, is that now on top of that, we have the new investment from Wallenberg in specifically in AI. So although we already have quite a lot of AI uh, research which is funded by the original WASP donation, we now have new opportunities in the form of an extra billion uh, specifically targeting AI. And within this, we see more or less two main tracks, the main track and a slightly smaller track, the main track being the focus on AI broadly, and a second track which is focusing on mathematical foundations and perhaps new mathematics targeted to AI. So at this point, I'd like to invite my colleague Holger to tell us a little bit about uh, WASP uh, and the AI math. Uh, and then we'll, we'll hand over from there to Rebecca. So Holger. Is it better now? Yeah, I can, I can hear myself even. So uh, I'm here because I'm, uh, I'm a member of the uh, steering committee for WASP AI Mathematics, so that's one step down from, from David. And it's also a small part of, of uh, what WASP is, it's about 10%, but it's still a lot of money. It's about, it's about 300 million crowns to be spent fairly, qui spent fairly quickly. And, the a and, and my name, I forgot, is Holger Roots, and I'm, and I'm from Mathematical Sciences. And the aim of 
WASP AI math is strong, sort of abbreviated, strong research connected to the WASP agenda in areas of mathematics relevant to artificial intelligence. And the focus is very much on mathematics, where the rest of WASP is, is much broader founded. And on to the right, you can see Pepper, the robot. Maybe some of you have met her. She's very sweet but also sometimes a bit insistent on selling things to you. And uh, what we'll try to do together with the rest of WASP is to try to help her being even better, at least even sweeter. And what we've done so far in the committee is we have uh, called for applications for, assistant for, for funding of assistant professor positions, and we have preliminarily granted six such they will be adv advertised in the summer, at the end of the summer, and they are quite well funded. They have funds for postdocs, for four or five postdoc years. They fund for PA uh, one PhD student and travels. And the aim is very much to try to recruit people internationally to get more knowledge into Sweden. And the sort of grants are not final. David will, in the end, de uh, decide if, if the candidates are good enough. I'm sure they will be. We have also given out a call for PhD students, and about 15 such positions will be decided today. And these, uh, and we have sort of given out the. Uh, there was a round of applications where there were about 82, I think we got 82 applications. We asked 18 to continue because we thought they were very good applications. And this was how much money we had, more or less, a little bit more. But now there's a second round of evaluation where the candidates will be evaluated, not the projects, which will mean that not all the 18 will give be, be, uh, be granted if the PhD candidate is not strong enough, in particular, has, does not have strong enough mathematical foundation, then he will not be granted. And the decision is today. There will also be a graduate school with courses in discrete AI and mathematics, which will contain graph theory, combinatorics, discrete mathematical in general, Continuous AI mathematics will be, the course will be in functional analysis, analysis, topology, either core uh, algebra. And then there's a stochastic AI math course, which will be statistics and probability, and an op optimization course. There will also, just with sort of my copying what's already been done in WASP, so there's also be core online, we use an online courses as sort of a quick start. There are nice ones in Stanford, for example. We'll use winter schools, study trips, and it'll start spring 2000, 2019, so in, in sort of next, next spring. Something which sort of is not advertised, but I believe there's some possibility if you have very good ideas for, for top researchers from abroad who, who one could maybe recruit to Sweden, say top professors, there might be a possibility of, of talking with us or even more with David about, about getting, trying to recruit them to Sweden. They'll so also most likely be guest for, for uh, positions. And this is the first round which I'm telling you about here, and there will be one more round soon. I hope the sooner the better, perhaps even in the fall. And in particular, if, if uh, not all of the assistant professors get good enough candidates, we hope there will be a second round fairly soon, and the same for the PhD students. And just to give you a very brief idea, what, what is mathematics for AI? Here is the topics for the, uh, for the uh, six uh, assistant professors' positions that, that are going to be advertised. One is probability and combinatorics in AI. It, this is in KTH. One is, that's sort of self-explanatory, I think. One is in algebraic topology and mathematical statistics in AI. The topology is sort of to 
give good method to, methods to recognize complicated shapes observed with, with uh, random noise. Optimal transport, big data and machine learning, that's here at Chalmers. And, and it's uh, Daniel Persson who's going to, who has this grant, I think he's here somewhere, so I, I won't try to explain it when, when he, with him sitting here listening. Networks and models underlying uh, intelligence, I suppose that's fairly self-explanatory. And the other two are also fairly self-explanatory. So this is what we're doing it in this project. It's, it's quite exciting and, and it'll be very interesting to see what comes out of it. I'd like to add, end by also saying that this is basically directed at mathematical departments and, and at mathematics, but it doesn't cover, but it's, cover, it's directed at foundations. It doesn't cover all we do in in the AI or machine learning area. There's lots of, of applied projects which don't fi fall under this heading, but under the more general WASP heading. And, and I couldn't resist uh, end by saying my own interest now is moving to anomaly detection, and, and that, that is uh, caused by needs of quality control, which always has been an important area in Sweden, and which is changing completely drastically. It used to be maybe 50 operators looking at two or three data sets. Now it's, it's uh, 10 operators looking at, at maybe a thousand data streams of very different qualities, different frequencies, different meanings. How on earth are, are those going to be handled by factories? And I think the the, uh, the statistical control area has no clue, and it's important to help them to learn. It's important for industry. Okay, thank you. Is this working? Yes, I can hear myself gooping. Okay, uh, I'm Rebecca Jornston, uh, Mathematical Sciences, a statistician. I've been asked to summarize the most, uh, well, mature of the WASP AI efforts. So the first call that went all the way from submitting proposals to actual recruitment and funding decisions, well, all but the final decision. Uh, so Chalmers got six projects and it's spread out over Mathematical Sciences and also the uh, Departments of Computer Science and Engineering and Electrical Engineering. Uh, actually, I think I'll skip the order here and tell you first a little bit about the process. So this was really unique experience. Uh, usually when we think about funding for uh, research proposals, it's a very lengthy process. So what was very intriguing working on the WASP, WASP AI math effort was that it went from essentially the propos proposal call or the call for proposals all the way to decision and recruitment within a span of four months. And that really resulted in energetic interactions with the departments. So I think that was a, a huge advantage of this moving so fast. What's also very interesting was that we had had many other openings at math for PhD positions during the spring on other related topics, more on, uh, for example, in math bio, but also traditional uh, PhD positions in statistics. And this seemed, the, math, uh, the, the WASP AI seemed to actually open up for a new pool of candidates. So there was actually not that much overlap with the other recruitment efforts we did. And that's interesting. So this seemed to have energized a new pool of students that maybe weren't considering a PhD position before. Uh, what we also saw was there were m many strong applicants from uh, Sweden and Europe, where we probably have faced much more intense competition from industry when it comes to PhD recruitment. So I think that was a very interesting um, observation for us to see. Uh, as I said, very fast process. Pros and cons, if I now uh, summarize the feedback from the people involved in the process. Uh, it was put a lot of stress on us to actually organize this. We're not used to working in this kind of uh, uh, fast decision type processes. So organizing interviews across departments, across all the um, different uh, PIs involved was a challenge, also timing with the semester as a whole. It was also a multi-step process. 
Uh, as Holger already uh, mentioned, that we proposed a project, we got a preliminary acceptance, then we still had to advertise and then get candidates approved at a second step. It's also a different process than we're used to. And it meant for a slightly difficult negotiation process with the top candidates, who then we, we had to ask to essentially say yes to a position we didn't quite have funding for yet. Um, and asking a top candidate to hold off maybe other competing offers under that uh, Working assumption was a challenge. I think we did really well because Chalmers came across as a very strong place to be at for this effort. We were really successful with six projects being funded, so the best of the uh, universities that applied for this process at this point. Uh, what I think is the most fantastic part of this initiative is that we're going to have a huge group of PhD students starting their education at the same time. This is not common for us, especially in math. It's uh, uh, maybe admitting a few students per year. Now we're going to have six students uh, shared then with uh, the other departments and as many from other uh, funding uh, initiatives as well, because we also have funding from the Research Council and SSF. So we're going to have a PhD pool of students starting at the same time that's 12 plus. It's going to really uh, create a potential high energy type environment uh, for that education. Uh, we've already noticed that this process has had a huge impact. So when it was first announced, we had meetings at the math department, for example, where we could really right away, because it was such a different type of funding opportunity, realize we had ideas for collaborations we hadn't had time to really pursue before. Uh, so we've found new collaborative connections within the department, but also between the departments. And what's interesting now is that for the math AI, we see many common themes in the project that have already been, hopefully, completely accepted, all but one uh, step left, uh, where we're all trying to find the mathematical principles uh, that essentially the advanced AI methods uh, uh, build on. But we all have very different perspectives. And I think this is gonna create totally different set of collaborations with m many funding pot uh, potentials for the future. Uh, we've also had already our initial meetings to decide how to actually create an educational program for this unique group of students. So we're discussing then joint PhD courses, which has been on our discussion list for a long time, but again, we maybe we need to push to get it going. So joint PhD programs across the departments, within the departments, multiple instructors, so we will learn from each other as well. So building up a big collaborative program. Uh, of course, then with the data science efforts already at Chalmers in place for the master's program, that's going to be great. And the WASP AI for postgraduate school will be a natural connection for us to also work on long term. There's so many efforts in the area going on at the same time that I can only uh, assume that this is going to make a huge change for, for our research focus and educational focus. So the chair effort you've already heard about, the general WASP program, the multiple calls that will come uh, some of them already out on the collaborative uh, AI, ML, and machine learning efforts, and the second group of calls for more math AI, uh, and the areas of advance at Chalmers. So there's so many efforts that need to be coordinated, but really it's going to create this critical mass for some, something to really kick off. And I'm going to go back to what I had at the beginning. So the six projects are now almost but funded, uh, is Peter Mossad's project on statistical model choice, but in the context of deep learning. So trying to see, can we find, use the principle of statistical uh, modeling to understand or use Bayesian net uh, neural networks uh, to come up with smarter model decisions. Daniel Persson that uh, Holger already mentioned uh, is looking into quantum physics and theory therefore to try to understand what's really underneath the hood of deep learning. Annika Lang is working with uh, essentially the architecture design. So using stochastic, stochastic PDEs to select the weights or coefficients in deep uh, learning network. Other efforts, myself and Yuan Yonason, uh, is as an example of how the whole track can uh, go. So uh, there's been so much activity in industry in Gothenburg, and we got a lot of master student uh, students proposals from industry. So our project was actually inspired by a master student thesis that we worked in an industry connection on essentially noisy labels, so mislabel data being used to train advanced AI uh, methods and how sensitive are they really to this. So our focus will be to try to see this from a statistical perspective 
So what kind of models are, is actually a deep learning, a ner learner learning, and can we refocus that or restate that in terms of traditional statistics to understand how sensitive the methods really are to mislabeling in data? So big data is not necessarily mean good data, right? So the question is what we're going to do with that. DevDAS has proposed an uh, a project on optimization algorithms, machine learning. It's a lot of new optimization techniques, usually built on stochasticity, and he wants to expand essentially on the, in this area. And Giuseppe, that already uh, has talked to you, is looking into how you can integrate theories from uh, well, information theory into really understanding uh, what's going on with deep learning. And that was my part. Before I hand over to our uh, last uh, contributor to this mini session uh, about WASP, uh, I'm going to mention some of the upcoming activities uh, and in particular recruitments in the WASP program. Uh, so the first is a recruitment which is actually being um, coordinated centrally by the Vallenberg Foundation, uh, and that is uh, what is now known as the Vallenberg Chairs in AI. So the ambition here is to bring some superstars to Sweden. Uh, and this is a very ambitious goal, given the nature of uh, how hot um, uh, uh, AI and machine learning uh, are in, in uh, worldwide at the moment. Um, but at the moment, we have an open uh, call for expressions of interest. We're working on f locating, identifying possible candidates for positions in Sweden of some form. And we're encouraging uh, uh, ideas to, to make their way directly to the, uh, the leaders of the WASP program for discussion. Uh, Bertil Andersson, who was formerly the uh, chair, uh, uh, the, um, the president of NTU Singapore, who uh, was very successful in, in uh, bringing NTU Singapore up in the world university rankings uh, is uh, directly employed by Vallenberg to help with this process. There was a comment from the floor that... Uh, million and a half and two million dollars annually. Uh, what level are you looking at here and, and do you intend to compete with that? Yeah, this is a good question. I, I'm not sure I'm qualified to, to speak on behalf of Vallenberg about their, uh, their strategy. Um, I have the same question, I would say. Um, so we may have to adjust our ambition level in terms of what, what do we mean by a superstar. Uh, maybe we mean more of a rising superstar who maybe has an aversion to working in uh, some countries in the world, but maybe not in Sweden. Um, there are a number of factors, I think, that we have to look at. I don't think we are planning to compete on salary, if, that, if, if that's the question. I, I really don't think that's possible in the, in the Swedish context. We have to compete on other terms, and we have to find the people who are, who are interested for other reasons. Uh, but it's a, it's a very good point, and I think it's one of the reasons why I say this is a very challenging and ambitious goal. But if we get a little bit more back down to earth, perhaps, uh, I'd like to mention uh, a slightly more modest idea, and that is to recruit people, uh, not necessarily world superstars, but maybe the next generation of superstars. Um, uh, that is, people at the assistant professor level, or possibly also associate professor or even full professor level, we're open, but I think we have in mind that we're going to have the best opportunities in recruiting the younger researchers, in particular younger researchers who, who um, are interested in starting to build their career in Sweden. For example, young researchers who have some connection with Sweden and who are interested in, in returning home. That's one particular category. We've uh, specified a little bit more precisely what we're hoping to get so what we're aiming for is research which you can connect to, I think, what you could say are core, some core topics in, um, in machine learning. So it's not just about applications. After all, these days, everybody and their dog is applying machine learning to, uh, to various problems. 
Uh, what we're hoping to do is strengthen our core competence. And towards that goal, we've specified some areas which, we, which we're really hoping that we can, where we can, we're hoping we will find people. Uh, and I'm, I've named them there. I'm not going to go through what they mean. Uh, if you're working in these areas, you know what they mean. Uh, and hopefully that will uh, be something of an encouragement for you to apply. So that's also ongoing work. We are working on that uh, as we speak, finding uh, potentially interested candidates. There is a central portal for, for, uh, um, uh, for uh, notifying interest in, in applying for such positions. But what we hope to do in the very near future is actually put out some formal advertisements at Chalmers for these positions. So uh, you know, keep your eyes open for, for those. And please do forward any ideas you have of, of uh, outstanding candidates who might be interested in coming to Chalmers. Um, and uh, so with that, I'd like to hand the last word over this session to my uh, colleague, Doug Vedelin, who's going to talk a little bit about some perspectives uh, on WASP and AI from, from his position as uh, head of the Data Science Division at the Department of Computer Science and Engineering. So, Doug, thank you very much. So, some sound here, yes? Okay, good. Uh, so, what we have uh, uh, talked about in, in um, uh, so this, this slide actually looks uh, quite different from the one I thought I submitted. <laughs> uh, there is some, 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 uh, mechanism that has reformatted in some way, but I will do my best. My point was that we should have these um, uh, Ah, okay, so now I understand. This, this part is not the heading, but that should be of this size. And so I had the three, the older WASP program that has been running for a while, the WASP AI math that Holger and Rebecca has described extensively, which is much newer, and uh, the also very new WASP AI with a heavy emphasis on, uh, on, on machine learning in different specialized uh, settings. And, and so, so assuming that these other have been covered, I would like to say something about WASP AI and the Chalmers activities there, but then I'm not able to talk about the, the number of people that we have already uh, sought for or have been granted uh, in, in this program because it's too new. But I would like to make another point here uh, related to that, and that is that although there is a huge effort now within um, AI, I mean, we are not building from, from nothing. Uh, the, in, in, in mathematics, we are building this WASP AI effort on, on a very solid and, and, and uh, basis of mathematical statistics. And we have, uh, in, in electrical engineering, we have signal processing, computer vision, and so on that has been around uh, for a long time. And I will... Uh, in my own division, in the data science division at uh, computer science and engineering, I have illustrated this by giving some of the subfields that we are working in and have been working in for a long time within machine learning and where we um, um, and, and, and where we regularly publish in the top conferences that are usually mentioned um, in the context of AI and machine learning. And using my own division, or our own division, as, as an example, just because I know that best, we can see that the activities in basic machine learning research are such that the areas that we have been working in mostly, they fit very nicely with the calls that are now coming in the WASP AI. And 
we have also taken part to a lesser extent in the previous calls of WASP, WASP autonomous systems and the WASP AI math, which was one of these projects that, uh, that uh, Rebecca mentioned. So that means that we all need to expand very significantly, but we have a foundation uh, where I think that we are and we have been doing good things in this area and therefore we are able to accelerate and, 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 and build on top of that. Um, and this uh, applies equally to uh, applied research where we have a lot of partners in a number of different areas um, which also will match very nicely with uh, with the forthcoming calls in, in, in WASP AI. So also, not just in basic research, but also in, in, in applied research and industrial cooperation and so on, we, we are well positioned to, to, to handle this, although it is a, a challenge to, uh, to increase this in, in all areas. Uh, then, uh, I have also a reflection I would like to make about um, uh, AI and the application of advanced information processing in general. And it looks like this, which um, I will try to understand my own slide. This relates to these parts. Okay, so there were basically three sections here, and you can, you can guess them. But... Um, <laughs> The, what I would like to say, and we can see this as a development in society too, that, that for a long time I would say that IT and information processing in, in, in society has been based on some rather basic aspects of information processing. We store and organize a lot of data in lots of convenient ways. We communicate this data and we visualize it in various ways. So, so I would say, think of this as basic information processing. And we were very happy for a very long time with mostly doing these things because it's very convenient to write not on paper but in a word processor and have all your data in the computer rather than in files and so on. So, so, so uh, this has been going on until now we are at a stage where everyone, every organization has lots of data and they ask the question, well, what can we do now with this data? And then I think that there is an intermediate level that we don't call AI, but which is still in every respect of the word advanced uh, uh, computation and, and information processing. And so we have, for example, the classical areas of algorithms, statistics, optimization, simulation, control, signal processing, vision, high performance computing, and such things. So, so this is complex information processing, um, although it is not traditionally called AI. And then building on especially algorithms, statistics, and optimization in the areas that we relate to AI, it's especially machine learning, but we don't all, only have machine learning because AI has a long tradition. So we have uh, older style, traditional symbolic AI, which can still be applied for some uh, kinds of problems and various kinds of search techniques also are co commonly used, for example, in, in game playing and, and so on that we strongly associate with with AI. So we have a, a whole field of uh, uh, techniques, theories that, that we can apply to problems. And why am I describing this to you? Well, first of all, it gives a way to, to, to sort all the areas in uh, advanced information processing. But it also is something to keep in mind if we now also want to approach different applications. Because if we take a, a, a particular problem at a particular company or at some department in health or, or somewhere else, then it is far from obvious which of these techniques we need to use to solve that particular problem. 
it, it can very well be that machine learning is the answer for a particular problem. But it can equally well be that the combination of statistics and optimization or some custom algorithm will do the job much better if it's a planning, a scheduling problem or something like that, that many people associate with AI, but maybe the machine learning approach is not, uh, I mean, the, the, the one to choose. And besides, within machine learning, there are lots of sub uh, methods that, that you have to uh, choose between. And my point is that, that finding the right match between each application and which subset of techniques that are applicable for each problem is a highly non-trivial problem. And I think that is one of the challenges also in, in, uh, in education that we need to think about. Thank you. We
right, welcome back, everyone. It's time to resume our little seminar. Uh, we move now to the next topic in our agenda, which is uh, AI and Data Factory Arena, and we have uh, the pleasure to have with us Maria Hedlund. Uh, welcome, Maria. And she will give us a little bit of an overview of uh, the discussion around uh, this, uh, this uh, arena and a motivation for why uh, Lindol Lindolman Science Park is, in is involved in it. And questions are very welcome. We try and make it a bit interactive. Yes. Yes. Okay. So, good afternoon. I'm glad you had the coffee before I started here. Um, honorable uh, artificial intelligence experts and ambassadors. Uh, we are here to talk about what we can do more. Uh, we've heard already uh, about many things that are ongoing, and I'm here to talk about even more. But very much about how we can um, catalyst on what everything is doing, and how we can add more value to what's already ongoing. Uh, to introduce myself, I'm Maria Hedlund. I'm right now the acting CEO of Vo Volvo. That was my previous <laughs> profession. <laughs> so now you got that as well, Lindholmen Science Park. Um, we, why Lindholmen Science Park? Why are we here? We are not the, the experts, but we have 20 years of experience of working on collaboration, and our mission 20 years ago when Chalmers, Gothenburg City and the industry created this mechanism, there was, the mission was to add value. And of course that has been done in different ways during these 20 years. It has developed. Uh, in the beginning it was very much about establishment around this local geographical area to build a future for Gothenburg, the region. Uh, make sure that we are there to attract talents and also uh, develop new jobs. Uh, along the way, we have developed a lot of uh, open research and innovation projects and program uh, that has developed into national and international uh, assignments. And, and um, many of you have, have for sure perhaps been involved already. Uh, so from this little local initiative 20 years ago, this arena, Lindholm Science Park, which is the area, which is this house, which is the name of our company, which is an ecosystem, has become a national resource. And when Sweden is looking upon where we are on a, uh, IE, um, a lot of things are ongoing, but to make sure, and then I repeat myself from what you hear and what you know, uh, is that we need to do even more. We need to make sure that we get more out of every krona that is invested. Uh, and it's about, you know, making sure that we are in the forefront to create a sustainable future and develop the new jobs in Sweden and with the new knowledge that is needed. And, and you are the expert on the knowledge side. Um, so, as been said already, to repeat a little bit, the industry, academia with yourself, and also with Noava posted this um, investigation and, and published that very late April this year about the, the sort of a gap analysis of, of where Sweden are. That, that's some of the input uh, where why an initiative was announced on May 16 with Pieter Eriksson. And he was here just outside this room to present this national initiative. And it was not about saying that all the initiatives that we've heard about today and more of that, that's, that's been done and ongoing in Sweden uh, should be covered into this, is that we need an arena to accelerate what we do. And the word that was really pronounced was world-class environment. And I like the, the superstar discussion we had just before. I don't think we should uh, you know, step backwards on that. Let us challenge ourselves, because I think that if we are not aiming for the superstar 
artists and, and world class, um, you know, we will, we will not even come close to it. But we can be realistic, but I, I like the idea and the ambition of looking for superstar and become superstars. That's great fun. Um, that, that's um, what's also ex was expressed in, on, on May 16 was this, you know, a hub and applied research. And, and we heard about the WASP initiative that is already also applied, but, but here we have dialogues ongoing, and I will come back to that, with, with, uh, uh, to make sure that we complement each other. Because this, and coming back to the mission of Lindholm and Science Park, we should add value. Uh, and then also uh, the cross-fertilization, I'll come back to that and uh, to develop methods and infrastructure. High international profile, collaborate with existing plants, Swedish A ventures. So it's nothing about competing. That's crucially important. And I think that, that all these initiatives that we heard about earlier today and, and more activities that are ongoing, we need to look upon ourselves as complementary. And where we sort of perhaps compete a little bit, that's just making us become closer to the edge. Uh, what do we mean by, by um, uh, cross-fertilization? Uh, we see uh, the, the assignment that was in, that was announced on May 16, was that we should look upon all these four areas jointly and to see, to capture you know, the, the, the edge of in each of these areas and to see what can combine them. And could we co-locate uh, resources and research uh, into the same area where we benefit from each other? Because, of course, there are areas where, where we can uh, um, learn from each other and also matters and, and issues that, that are shared between these areas. Um, so, right now, uh, when we got this assignment, as I said, we are not the expert of IE, but we have developed an expertise on the how. How to move forward with collaboration projects and how to move forward to make new knowledge come valuable for product development, for development in the big. Uh, so, we uh, discussed with the, the Companies and academia that you see on the slide here is, is now part of the interim steering board. That's also been part of the discussion coming into this announcement. Uh, that how should we develop this? How should we make an interim group to make sure that we capture all your knowledge and all knowledge that are out there uh, to make sure what does Sweden need beyond what's already ongoing? What can add value? So myself and my colleagues, Peter Eamann and Martin Svensson, I put the names out here, and you can find them on lindholmen.se for, for contact information if you want to get in contact and, and get more deeper information about where we are heading. Uh, we are now, right now, working with uh, organizations, academia, and, and dedicated people that, that are interested in in working with us on creating the infrastructure of this collaboration arena. And we work with these uh, companies and, and uh, Chalmers and Gothenburg University uh, weekly to make sure, or almost daily actually, uh, to make sure we capture everything, to make sure once again that we are creating an infrastructure that can add value. So, uh, a working document that I will share with you is a little bit the time frame. So, very important here is to see that we are in a planning phase. A planning phase where we need to find out what is needed. Uh, we need to find agreement uh, within uh, private sector, academia, public sector, how to invest, how to make sure that this become an accelerator for Sweden in IE. Uh, we are looking at places for a venue 
and we are looking, looking locally uh, here at Lindholmen specifically to find the place for this to become, to find a place where uh, people like yourself can locate and, and uh, become, uh, well, search for, for synergies with other, and also what I haven't mentioned is, is the data factory. Some of you talked about it already now. Um, the data, fact data factory is, well, I, I got the question during this month that what does it look like? And <laughs> I said, well, it's red with white uh, uh, corners and so forth. No, uh, it's, it's crucially important that we discuss with you on what this should look like. What, what kind of data do we need? And how can we use it in order to, to, uh, to work on the applied research here? And, and so we need to work in parallel here. It is, uh, this, this is really unique from, from what we right now know what's ongoing in Sweden. So this could be really a, an added value. And then to look into these areas. So we now have created work packages with people who know these areas uh, to, find, to give input to all these other things. Uh, and um, so th that's where we are right now is, is to formulate the mission for these work packages uh, that uh, the experts on the area can work on this, formulate what's needed and then give input also to the data factory. We're working with uh, the looking for basic funding and uh, also we're working with external relations is a, is a nice word for, for uh, creating dialogues and relations with all the initiatives ongoing and uh, very specifically outside Gothenburg. Um, so it's, um, this is pretty much our, our uh, sort of steering document right now for working on the how uh, to find out the what. And we need to work with you and your organizations and your, your faculties and, and your expertise uh, to find out what really can add value. And we need you as ambassadors to speak about this once you, you find out more about it and to speak about the, the, the potentials of this center. To, to have that here in Gothenburg, to, to for have Gothenburg and Lindholmen uh, as a center for, for the uh, AE uh, acceleration in Sweden. And this, we, crucially important, and I, I feel that I repeat myself a thousand times now, but if you should remember anything from what I have talked about, is that this should be complementary, accelerating, and add value to Sweden. So, do I need to say that one more time? No. So, um, as you know, we are on the World Cup, World Cup of uh, IE. We, we, uh, I think we should aim for the finals, and uh, therefore we need the superstars. And if we don't have them, we need to attract them to come here, and we need to, uh, as many of you are, are good at here, and it's your job to create the superstars. And uh, Lindholmen Science Park is, has been given the task to create a collaboration environment to support the initiatives that are ongoing and to create an infrastructure that can accelerate our shared ambitions. Yes? We have time for question. Question for Maria. Dev Dev. So uh, earlier when Jan was talking about the thing, it was clear that he said that's a virtual, uh, a virtual uh, arena. But here, is there supposed to be a virtual arena or a physical arena? Are you, in what, are you thinking of people who are going to be physically sitting in this arena or is it going to be a, a way to virtually coordinate between people sitting in many different places? I think it will be both. Both uh, a physical place 
uh, because still, if, if, even if we are talking about what we're talking about, we, we still see, and this is also based on our experience uh, in our collaboration project that we work in other areas, that meetings between people, talking between each other, means a lot. And, and, but absolutely, this needs to be virtual. And, and uh, uh, my colleague Peter usually say that, unfortunately, not all experts are born in Gothenburg. And we have to, well, pen it's, it's painful, but we have to agree. So we need to work with people outside Gothenburg as well. But um, they can learn from us, we can learn from them. Mm. One qu two questions. <laughs> You want to know my salary? No. <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh, so you mentioned you're you're actively looking for for funding for this, um, and and I guess it's hard to know. But I is there a goal set for what you think this combined effort with AI and data factory will require to operate? Uh, do you have a goal for that? And what's the distribution between Vinova, uh, industry funding, and other potential funders in your mind? I, w I would say that we're working on that goal, uh, but what was uh, uh, announced on May 16 was that, that uh, the government was telling Vinova to spend 50 million a year in 10 years of their existing budget on this. Uh, so, uh, sorry? Not just this though, right? No, but uh, very much on this. So, uh, what we see here, and, and uh, very important is that this money was not put on our account. It's still for us to argue for it, but it, sh it should be focused on this. But uh, we are working with Vinova right now, and I think also the work with the data factory uh, will, will also uh, create more uh, data into that uh, to see what kind of goal we can have. But I think... Um, I, I, I will uh, quote you from, from now on and, and that we will, we will aim for the superstar level because I, for me that, that's, that's what Sweden needs. That's what the NOVA report says that we are lacking and, and we should aim for that. Jan. So I'm, I'm wondering when you are saying superstar level for a data factory, what do you mean? I think you know that better than I do. Yes, and yes. I don't think it's really superstars we need on the no. data factory. We, we need to get it working and, yeah. and get people there. And I, about superstars, uh, I'm a bit worried that one focus on that because we will never get these people. What we should aim at are young people with real potential of becoming good researchers. We have used that strategy for quite a long time at Charles and Gear and been very successful mm. by pr bringing up people that really become good. Mm. That's a more efficient way. And, and Sweden is very attractive for young people. Mm. It's not so attractive for older people, except when they should retire if they could bring a pension. <laughs> so so I, I think that that's a very, very important aspect. It, it's a valid comment, and we are in agreement yes. on that. Uh, it's, it's the... the uh, more of the edge competence that, that I'm, I'm thinking of when I'm using the word superstar. So, yeah. so we are in agreement uh, yeah. and uh, uh, I think it's about the mindset and what we want to be and to yeah. become. Mm -hmm. okay. Last question, then we have to move to okay. the panel. Uh, yes, so you have shown like uh, five companies like in the, in the in the consortium, so or uh, how do you call it in Arena? But uh, are there interests for uh, from uh, other companies? Um, you have seen already that other companies have uh, expressed the interest. Yeah, absolutely, okay. and I, I think we have might could say that we've been in contact and contacted by some 30 more companies. So, so we are in agreement uh, or in dialogues with them. It's it's startups and it's. Uh, smaller companies and it's also large corporations. Uh, so I didn't write them down because we're still in dialogues, but I, I wanted to show that the, the industry and, and also the, the um, important of a univer Gothenburg University and Chalmers commitment to this. Thanks a lot, Maria. That was very informative.
I ask the member of the panels, which will start now and will conclude this uh, uh, workshop, this little workshop, to, to join me on stage and take one uh, of these fantastic chairs that have been provided. And we have to figure out with the, with the mics. Maybe you, you share them a little bit, you pass them around, yeah. Oh, we have one, yeah, we have enough, yeah. You can bring them. Yeah, that's the one. No, there's, there's. Yeah, okay. All right, so while we set up the panel, let me fetch the relevant document. So we move to the last part of this seminar, which is a research panel. We have uh, five panelists who have kindly agreed on a short notice to, to join us, under the condition that no preparation was needed for this panel. So I did the homework. They will uh, address my question, hopefully, in a very interactive way. So we, we really hope that uh, you, public, <laughs> will be part of this panel. So uh, the five panelists are in order, alphabetic order, Devdat Dubashi, who is a professor in the Data Science Division of Computer Science and Engineering, Robert Feld, who is professor in the Software Engineering Division at Computer Science, Rebecca Jönsted, you've already seen her, she's professor in Biostatistics and Applied Statistics at uh, the Department of Mathematics, Eric Rosen, who is a senior expert in deep learning and machine learning at Senuity, and then uh, Lennart Svensson, who is professor in the Signal Processing Group at E2. So what I've done to prepare for this panel is a bit of homework. And there are very many interesting documents one can read upon to prepare for such a panel. One we already touched upon is the Vinova report, which was published in April. Then, because we have so many mathematicians in the audience, I thought I'd take another document. And it's from uh, Cedric Villani, which I guess most of you with the math background now, so he's a field medalist for his work on partial PDE, and he's now elected member of the French Parliament, interesting enough, and he has written a report about uh, AI for a meaningful artificial intelligence towards a French, and because French tend to be an European uh, strategy. Okay, and there's many more documents you can read, and they're all very interesting, so it was a pleasant homework to, to do. So out of this homework, I extracted a couple of questions with few citations from some of those documents, which I would like the panel to, to reflect upon, and maybe you, you all. And we we'll see how we go with time. I'm not sure if we'll cover all of them, but it doesn't really matter. So we start with something that uh, some of you have already touched upon. Ivica has talked about it. Um, and we had also other uh, speakers talking about it. So what, what do we exactly mean by AI? Okay, so if, if you look at those reports, AI is not a new word. It has been around from the 50s, since the 50s. Is modern AI the same as machine learning? Of course, we, we already heard some comments about this. But is it a new branch of engineering? Is it really changing the way the engineering profession works? And what's the role of data, key in the Lindolman initiative? What's the role of new algorithm? What's the role of computational power in modern AI? Please, who would like to start? This. Do you want to go in the, do you want to go in no. alphabetical order again, or you want to go? <laughs> no, no. <laughs> All right, can I start? It seems easy to start with this one. Um, so, first, um, is it intelligent? I, I would like to question that and argue that most of the things that we do today, the machine learning algorithms, are not very intelligent. Um, but artificial intelligence sounds nice, so. I guess we'll <laughs> keep using that. Um, so that's probably what I would like to start with, that I think of machine learning as um, the main tool, and deep learning in particular, of what we think about as uh, artificial intelligence um, nowadays. And I think the, the two main enablers of that I'm showing you so that you can... All right, good. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Uh, so I guess the two main enablers of that has been um, more data, more annotated data, we have bigger data sets nowadays, um, as well as bigger, better computational power. Right? So 
the graphical processing units, the GPUs, have changed everything for us, as well as the amount of data that we have access to. So I think the algorithms haven't changed so much. Um, once you know the the breakthrough of this came, you know, maybe six, seven years ago or so, new algorithms have helped accelerate it. Um, but the these two factors have been the the main reason, I think, for the breakthrough. So. Okay, so since it's uh Hello. <coughs> Does it work? Yes. Okay, so since it's a panel, I have to stay, maybe <coughs> to make the panel interesting, I have to start by disagreeing with uh, <laughs> the <laughs> previous panel. That's good. Uh, well, but, but, uh, okay, but uh, not just for the sake of disagreeing. But uh, So first of all, uh, uh, I might start with agreeing that modern AI is actually machine learning. Yes, <coughs> so today, if you think about what AI is, it's more or less synonymous with machine learning. Uh, Doug mentioned symbolic uh, AI uh, probably exists in some nooks and corners somewhere, but that's not really what is driving most of the advances today. But then uh, the disagreement, uh, if I was to disagree with Leonard, I would like to say temper the discussion a little bit today. Uh, people identify machine learning with only deep learning. And to me, that's a little bit of a, <clears throat> that doesn't do justice to the whole field of machine learning, which is much wider. Uh, I mean, there's um, uh, all those techniques of, uh, probabilistic graphical models and uh, <clears throat> Bayesian learning and so on, those are still extremely relevant and probably in my uh, view will become even more relevant when you want to uh, talk about um, having a precise control on error, uh, you know, quantification of error, confidence, explainability and so on. Those are things where you need all these other very classical techniques of AI. So I think <clears throat> one needs to keep uh, that in mind. Uh, and then, uh, I agree that a lot of the progress has been driven by data, so good news for the data factory, more data is better and so on, and by computing equipment, um, GPUs you said, but actually the, there is a lot of innovation ha happening, um, amazing amount of innovation happening in the hardware industry today, which uh, we have to, uh, in our de de department have a group that works on hardware, and now they are comp the only thing they're interested in is machine learning, because that is driving their field as well. And it's not just GPUs, but FPGAs and other kinds of new hardware um, <coughs> uh, platforms that are uh, really changing the game, uh, you know, it's playing a game-changing role in many different areas. So that's another important thing. And then I also disagree that uh, there's no development in algorithms. I think that might be true for deep learning because it's, it's more or less the same kind of things that were done in the 90s, but now they start working with the GPUs and so on today. But if you look at the wider area of machine learning, I think there have been tremendous advances in algorithms as well. So Rebecca can attest to uh, high dimensional statistics. There have been amazing advances in that area. Uh, in optimization, there has been a very strong <clears throat> set of you know, new insights in convex optimization, first order methods, uh, all kinds of, lots of advances in these areas, which are very classical areas, but lots of the recent uh, advances have been driven by machine learning. So I think there's been a, quite a lot of change in the methods uh, also today. Uh, then maybe I can uh, hand over and, uh, so I don't consume all the time up. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so so maybe I will touch, I, I, in the same order, I will touch on a third question then, <laughs> different from yours. So is it a new branch of engineering? I, I, I strongly think it is. I think uh, when, when you want to put uh, AI or machine learning into real software systems out in the out in industry, some of the traditional problems with like scaling up the interface to the result and so on are sometimes more important than if you're using the latest AI technologies. Um, we've been apl applying AI for improving software development in telecom and in aerospace and so on. And I've rarely seen in any of these projects that you know a five to ten percent increase in the accuracy by using a better AI is, is the critical factor. It's more how do we integrate this into existing development processes, uh, into manufacturing, how do we visualize the results so that people understand it and so on. And I think I see the same thing when it comes to health engineering. If you want, doc if you want to support the decisions of doctors in the infectious disease ward here at Astra Sjukhuset, uh, it's not so much about using the latest AI technologies, explainable AI or the interface to the end result is as important. So um, I think 
I think Dog Vedelin mentioned earlier today that we are not starting from scratch, and I think we really need to see that. I mean, existing advances and uh, research groups here at Chalmers and elsewhere on both computer science, mathematics, but also software engineering, how do you scale this up, how do you put it into a uh, larger engineering context is also kind of core to this. So that's maybe my main message. <laughs> Uh, okay, uh, I'm going to start by quoting or possibly misquoting Petter Mostad <laughs> in order to answer the question about the AI. Misquoting possibly because I can't remember exactly. So I was rereading the applications uh, to prep for the seminar, uh, for the presentation here. Uh, and you were saying something like that uh, what, uh, say, the deep learners were doing is something like um, uh, automatically adapting or choosing complexity. I like that idea that artificial intelligence would be, it, if it's classical statistics, you start by defining a model, meaning the complexity of what you think describes this uh, data generative mechanism. Whereas the point of AI would be that that's adaptively decided by the method, right? So it picks the model comp or the data complexity for you. Because that would be removing one step in the in decision that has usually been the statistician's responsibility, right? So I kind of like that way of looking at it. <coughs> then I'm going to do my uh, what statisticians do, rain on everyone's parade, right? Because that's what we're really good at. And that is with respect to the fourth point, uh, exponential growth of data. So I see one problem with uh, big data, AI, deep learning, all the bus stuff, is to forget the basics, right? And more data does not mean good data. It usually means that uh, problems with data is exacerbated. There's uh, tremendous problem with bias sampling, or what's called convenience sampling. The big data is heavily representing something that was easy to attain. And therefore that means you can correct for that with, without knowing that. And the other thing that happens is, with exponential growth of data, people get tunnel vision, so they forget to check the basics, check diagnostics. I mean, the model is no good to anyone if it doesn't actually fit, right? Even if it was big data that you fit, it still doesn't fit. Uh, so one important parallel development is visualization of diagnostics in big data situations to check, do your homework for the basic stuff too. And that also pertains to new algorithms. So you might think that having better hardware or GPUs or just paralyze and use cluster computing solves everything. Actually it does not because at some point or another you do aggregate decisions and tiny, tiny errors then accumulate. And that can make for radically bad fits by simple architectural problems that there's like an out of sync in the parallel uh, programming. So we just realized that in my group, like why is this doing so poorly? It's like a simple little buggy thing that sort of aggregate decisions out of sync and then the gradient descent just took off somewhere else. Uh, but it's, it's easy to get sort of tunnel vision and just steam ahead. Yeah, so I think that was a really nice reflection on the last point. I still believe people will try to solve problems by throwing more data at them, and I think that will continue to be an important aspect of, in particular, deep learning. But it cannot continue forever. Uh, for example, the development of processing power will limit that approach, which will open up for more AI-specific architectures in computer design, which I think is an important area, but also to select your data more carefully. It's a Super interesting uh, point. Then I go back to the first one, AI is not new, and I, I have taken some joy in talking to people, ordinary people, not necessarily experts, what they think AI means. And I can speak for a large fraction of the people I've met, including myself, thinking that AI is about mimicking intelligence in a machine. And just because you're using machine learning to try to detect pedestrians in a video stream doesn't mean you're building an intelligent system. Then you're using machine learning. I very much agree that modern AI has become synonymous with machine learning and particular deep learning, but I think that's, I don't like that actually. I want to distinguish building intelligent agents and then you can use from the tools you're using to build the intelligent agent. And I do think that AI, if we, I will use the word like everyone else here today. So, <laughs> as uh, collecting all these methods. Uh, but when I say deep, uh, AI, to me it's very much about deep learning today and it's opening up possibilities of solving problems we couldn't solve before. 
And then we are actually in a new branch of engineering because we're trying to solve new problems. But traditional engineering and software engineering is super important for us still. Thank you. Uh, reflection from the audience or comments or question before we move to the next. Uh, Hi there. So the uh, CRA, which is the Computing Research Association in the US, actually keeps track of uh, who gets hired to US universities. The latest Tall B uh, report for last year actually shows that of, out of 129 tenure track faculty positions in the US, 22 were in core AI, about 42 were in related fields, including the 22 core positions, so robotics, etc. Nine were in software engineering. So, I mean, the, there is obviously, and unless, of course, MIT, Stanford, Berkeley, et cetera, is completely wrong, uh, there is a wide agreement that the points Rebecca made and the points Deftart made, that, that algorithms and furthermore the methods is, is absolutely fundamental to becoming a superstar or maintaining the superstar status uh, in AI. Um, and I think the, uh, I mean, I take obviously the objection to your comment. Um, the, the situation right now is that, you know, that there are people who use data for the first time. They're like little kids on the beach. You give them a plastic shovel, they're really, really happy, right? But if you want to build like a long highway or something like that, I'd rather build bulldozers and get this task done quickly. So, uh, so I don't fully agree with your, your point. And I think the, the biggest problem we are facing right now is really on the algorithms, methods, science, and it includes our colleagues from statistics. It includes computation. I see that there is value in, of course, getting this into applications, but I, uh, especially as a researcher in biomedical applications, I take strong objection to your assessment that, oh, methods don't matter in that at least, so. So, so we, we heard two, two opinions on, on this, which uh, I, I find both valuable. I mean, I guess the emphasis is more on academic versus applied research or implementation of that research and innovation. I think all of them are, are interesting elements to, to keep uh, in, our, in our discussion. Um, any other comments or shall we move? I suggest we, we move if you're okay with it. Yeah? yeah? yeah. Okay, so um, main AI players. Okay, so you need to, <laughs> there's a monitor there, but I'm not sure <laughs> how many of you can see that. I can see it. Um, so here's some comments uh, from those reports. Silicon Valley is uh, the AI epicenter. Uh, there's a constant outflow of AI researchers from academia to private enterprises, fueled by the kind of salaries that private enterprises can offer. We touched upon this earlier on today. Um, AI research is insufficient in volume. Uh, that was clearly spelled out in, in the Vinova report. And, uh, Whoever research uh, we have uh, in, in AI, in the AI field, it tends to be a male. So there's a gender balance issue within, within AI. Uh, uh, somebody wants to go before us. Oh, that, that, that's a very good point. So maybe, maybe it's China. Maybe Silicon Valley. We just don't know enough Chinese to revive it. <laughs> true, true. Good point. So Silicon Valley bar China. Uh, <laughs> no, it's, it's a fair point. And China has announced huge investments. If I may, I, I think maybe the money is not what's uh, attracting people mostly. They work with the best, solving the coolest problems, and the, the whole ecosystem around this is, uh, I think, what's really attractive. Mm. Money is maybe one attractive, but I think it's not the major. Yeah, so maybe I a reflection that is, yes, uh, this is true, that uh, the, the second point in particular, the outflow of AI researchers to private enterprise, this is really serious in the sense that this is not uh, just a problem that Shalmuz is having, this is a problem that CMU has who lost the whole uh, department to Uber, or uh, this is a problem that Oxford has, they lost, they, they just built up a very good AI machine learning group and they en masse as a whole moved to DeepMind. So, even those uh, people are finding it difficult to hold, hold on to faculties. That's uh, definitely an issue and uh, something that needs uh, further thought because if you don't have good faculty in the universities, how are you going to train the next generation of uh, you know, students and PhD students and so on? If all of these faculty move to these labs, 
So that's, uh, you know, the, those labs will not have the student talent to take on in the future. So there should be a better way for industry and uh, universities to, to collaborate in this respect. And uh, what is the center of uh, AI? Actually, Silicon Valley, even in the US, it's not clear that it's only Silicon Valley. You, you have uh, MIT, Boston area with, uh, you know, Facebook and Facebook research, Microsoft research. So <clears throat> there are pockets in the US on both uh, coasts. And then, of course, in terms of the investment and so on, it's, um, China is always scary in, in many areas, but in this too, their investment is dwarfing the investment that uh, US or Europe makes in these fields. Other comments from the panel? Yeah, I think, uh, I'm not so sure it's uh, the most important thing to consider who's the leader and, and this and that. I think what we should try to do in West Sweden, uh, in Sweden in general, and maybe in Gothenburg, is to to build on some strengths we have. I think we have a stronger collaboration between industry and academia. This is not so common in US still. I mean, it has improved from Microsoft, built up Microsoft research and so on. It's more common today. Uh, but we recently had a big software testing conference and a software engineering conference here in Sweden. And uh, all the international researchers were really impressed that we could attract, you know, hundreds and hundreds of, uh, of industry participants. And they say they would, this would never have happened in US or in UK and so on. So, yeah, in some sense, I mean, both Boston, China and, and, and Silicon Valley or California, with, including Berkeley, uh, are really leading in some sense, but we can lead in, in, in other ways. And I think that that's a real opportunity for us here. Right, so the second point. So I've gossip from colleagues in the US. Uh, since recent conferences, this has been some of the like talk around the, the water tank, I don't know, what's it called? Water toilet, or around the coffee break, right? Uh, and that a lot of the stars is moving to the, the big labs. Um, is it time to panic? No, not necessarily, because I think initiatives like what's going on now, like the WASP AI, uh, the chair, the chairman, obviously the government making initiatives will always make them um, enough money available for people to stay in academia with strong collaborations with industry. So as long as we are the ones educating the PhDs or take the main responsibility for that, it's going to be okay. Why are people leaving for the labs? Because when finding funding takes all your time and it's almost no return of that effort. So as long as initiatives like these exist, I think we'll be fine because enough people will want the academic life. Pros and cons, you can debate, but I mean, I would probably never leave because I know nothing else, <laughs> right? And I like teaching meet students, but it's true. There's frustration of spending all your time on a zero return effort for funding. That is what kills the joy and then people rather go to labs and work on fun stuff and have the academic freedom. And Rocco, are we not moving to the other points or no one wants to talk about the elephant in the room? <laughs> the gender fourth one, <laughs> right? So I thought I would just briefly talk about that. So. Uh, there is a problem with uh, how to attract women. I was actually really disappointed how few applicants we got. I tried to email the good master students and say you really should look into it. I don't know if it's a branding problem that AI sort of is, they feel like it's not uh, interesting or it's, not, it's narrow or something, a misunderstanding about that. But I also think it's a huge problem not catching them early enough. There's, there's a gender imbalance going into the program. So how do you expect them to be evened out after the master level? So I think the problem is that uh, the girls don't realize that you can go to the technical programs when they're in high school. And that's because the people in high school are not informing them about the possibilities, I think. And then they only see what they've seen around them and therefore we don't get enough input. Yeah. Well, maybe I can uh, uh, comment on the gender uh, aspect too. So I did the same for my position and uh, contacted several of our master students, some of them now working in Zenuity at least try to show them the position if they were interested in coming back to do a PhD or maybe they could do it with an industry position from Zenuity. But surprisingly, they, the, the response from these female students was, um, was not as good as one might have hoped. On the other hand, the positive side is that, uh, just to say that in the recruitment process, another thing that uh, was special in this WASP is that they asked us to send two names, not instead of one, if the second ranked candidate was a woman. So WASP is trying to take some 
uh, initiatives in promoting women in the field, and they asked us to send, if there were, um, a, if there was a strong woman candidate, strong enough to be on, at least in the second position, then they, you, they could possibly fund both uh, positions. And so um, I actually did, uh, my list did have a woman in the second position, so let's see if WASP, uh, hint, hint, they should offer her the position. <laughs> We have questions from the public, Holger and then Ivica. Yeah, I'd, I'd like to set what you said completely straight. And the rule was if the first candidate was a woman or the second candidate was a woman, then there was a possibility of getting two grants. So it didn't mean that if the second was a woman, you got an extra. So there was no incentive to change the order of, 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 of applicants to get two. Yeah, that's and, right. I didn't I, mean I, that I've learned order, that I not said. everybody had read it carefully enough, but <laughs> we thought that was important, so I wanted to say it clearly. Uh, also, yeah, I did read it carefully, and that was my interpretation, that in the, in the, in the standard ranking, without any changes, if the second the first or the second position is a woman, then you could send both names yes. for potentially yep. getting yep. both of them funded. Yep. That was the interpretation. Yep. That yep. But that's not what you said. <laughs> yeah. I thought that was what I said. <laughs> Thanks for the clarification. Ivica? Uh, I, I would like to mention that together with the uh, chair, uh, the uh, uh, Child Mesh uh, Foundation has also approved uh, another proposal which was for uh, to, to improve the gender balance at, uh, at Chalmers, so with very concrete measures to increase the number of researchers, female researchers, and we will see if these very concrete measures will actually have effects. Uh, if I can slip in a quick point about the, what I think is a really valid point is the, the, the third one, and I think that all of us would agree with that uh, AI research in Sweden is very insufficient and I think the WASP initiative was directed exactly to try to remedy the situation. Uh, this is an area that has strong, of course, very strong representation, you know, uh, the, lead is, um, the US has a lot of uh, activity there and, uh, and, and also Britain and so on, but Sweden has been lacking in this and <clears throat> WASP is, a, is an effort to address this deficiency and maybe the others are are synergistic with that, and that's a good that it's a little late, but at least the effort is being made now to address this. Uh, so I have a question for Eric, um, representing industry in the panel. Uh, uh, so given that we are discussing AI research at Chalmers and education, uh, from your perspective in, in building a successful deep learning team at Senuity, what would you like to, what advice would you like to give to the, re, to the educators and to the providers of talent that you rely on? That's number one. And number two is how do you think about the long-term sustainability of research if uh, companies keep scooping up all the talent? What do you think about your recruiting strategy there? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so the, the question coming from you, Daniel, of course, I start to relate to the data, but um, I think that is a very valid point in any case. So what we do at Senuity, where we're trying to industrialize deep learning, is that we spend an awful lot of time collecting data and cleaning up data and preparing the data to make it suitable to learn anything from it. So really, we are putting all the information we can into this the training data, and then we're trying to have neural networks to extract the information. And of course, the information in the data needs to be uh, as good as possible and as informative as possible, and you were touching upon this as well. So that would be a recommendation to focus more on that. And this is also the reason why we at Senuity think a data factory is a good idea, even though it's very vaguely defined at the moment. Because if you have a problem that you want to solve using, using machine learning, you should not limit yourself to the data available. You should take control of the data. And I would like to challenge the university as well. Those of you who are teaching courses are not doing that. I would like you to encourage the students to actually manipulate the data and say what data could be needed to solve this problem in a better way. And then for the strategy, 
Well, I, I actually do believe that many companies in Gothenburg have found that, okay, we have AI here, and some companies seem to be making billions using AI, so what can we do about with this? And it's not so easy to see how you can actually apply it in your business. So I think that there will be kind of a balance. There are not so many students coming out from Chalmers now with AI degrees, but I don't think the demand from industry is yet super high either. And one thing that I would like to see, so I think my strategy is working out pretty well, <laughs> sucking up the best students from Chalmers last year. Um, but um, I would like to see more also focus on startups, like for example your company, to have students come up with their own ideas. If they're learning about deep learning and, and AI now, how can we use it to solve new problems that these traditional companies are not looking at? And this is also coming back to, because what I believe is that if AI is used in a wise way and we continue to see improvements, it will have a super large influence on the world as we know it. And if women are not part of this, I'm scared. So uh, how to get women interested in this field, I, I don't know, but I, I consider it a super important challenge. Sorry, maybe I can say something as well. Uh, so I haven't seen the outflow of AI being a huge problem here. Um, so we haven't seen so many recruitments from uh, the academia to the industry locally. Um, and uh, though I do agree that AI research in Sweden is definitely insufficient, and I also agree with what Devdat said before that machine learning is a much richer field than deep learning, um, I feel that uh, from the uh, interaction that I have with the industry, perhaps the lack of competent people is the most um, urgent problem that we have, that we need to educate more people who are, can become experts in in machine learning and artificial intelligence. Um, that's generally, I, I meet companies all the time who come to me and they have these problems um, and they know nothing about how they can use machine learning to, uh, to, to improve their business. Right? Um, so I think we need to kind of urgently start educating more people who can help these companies, right? So, so um, quick follow up on that. Uh, to say that data was needed, I think uh, the data science program would, is, is hopefully going to contribute to focusing on data and dealing with data. Uh, and the second thing is, uh, you said uh, that uh, interest from companies. So my feeling from meeting a lot of, or even looking at companies here, is there are lots of companies here who say they want to do something with AI and machine learning, but they don't really know what it is. So <clears throat> that, that, that's a, a common that, that situation. That is exactly my point. I have a comment. So, since Daniel was the one who asked the question, so here's an example. I thought was a fantastic uh, feedback from industry. So, uh, in the last couple of years, I've had a lot of requests for uh, master thesis projects with industrial partners, where it's been a bit more research oriented. Sometimes the industrial projects are not so much fun for us. Uh, there really is like a, post, a question that's already been asked and almost answered. Uh, but here it was more like actually research type questions, and it's an excellent opportunity for the small companies or the big ones to to actually create the research environment or make us do what you need, right? So it's a sort of inspiration for then uh, our applications for research projects. So I think that feedback loop is also gonna help. Can I say something more? Sure, so I um, um, have a couple of more comments on the same topic. So uh, um, regarding the data factory, um, actually I'm helping out with Anatel and Daniel who's sitting over there. Um, to try to develop more efficient data factories. And I think that actually from an academic point of view, that's gonna be one of the most important and interesting research questions in, in the upcoming years. Uh, helping us to, to expand machine learning to new areas where we do not yet have um, large sets of annotated data. Right? Um, also, you know, start speaking about education, we've, uh, I've, during the last year or so, I've developed two new courses, one in reinforcement learning that I developed early last year. Um, I didn't, we didn't essentially announce it at all. We sent an email to our so department. So it was a PhD course? Uh, it was intended to be a PhD level course, yes. Uh, so I sent it to our department and I think two more people in the industry. And um, so that was before I started developing the course, uh, in just before Christmas. 
And I said, in January, I will start teaching this course, right? So there was, everything happened super quickly. Um, around New Year's, uh, we had 100 people who had signed up. Uh, 60 of those were from the industry, right? And I think 40 of those 60 were people with a PhD already, right? Uh, which I just found incredible, right? This, also just the fact that the companies were willing to say, okay, we'll put these 40 researchers at our company to take a course at, at Chandlish and sp spend, you know, 50% of their next two months uh, at Chandlish attending the course, right? Uh, I was completely overwhelmed by the, uh, by the interest uh, uh, from that, right? And yeah, maybe an indication of <laughs> the, the type of interest that you can get from the industry on, on these topics. Yeah. And a, pr a reflection from one of the students of the course, <laughs> being me then, is that <laughs> we got to learn about reinforcement learning, which I think is what is closest to true intelligence of all the topics that we have been discussing here. Uh, it's a super cool field that I think we need to find these really challenging and cool research questions now that can attract students, and we, we should do more about that. Yeah. Right, so I guess in the interest of time, we need to stop the panel here. Uh, there will be, there's plenty more stuff to, to talk about, but we don't have the time for it. Maybe we should have a follow-up uh, seminar about this. Um, I, let's thank the panel for the excellent job they did. And uh, I call up uh, Ivica on stage for some concluding remark. Can I get? So, so uh, there is one statement from uh, Churchill. I think he said that this is not the end. It's not uh, how it was. Uh, it's not, uh, but it's not the beginning. But it's maybe end of the beginning. C kind of, kind of like that. And uh, I, I think really we are here uh, on the beginning, even if it's not beginning of the beginning. But uh, it's uh, extremely a large a field, everything what can be changed and which uh, actually we can uh, have uh, impact on, which we can influence. And that's uh, very exciting. Uh, the people from uh, uh, humanistic area very often worry about uh, uh, AI. They say that there are a lot of things which don't know it, it can happen about the jobs, about uh, who is giving the decision and so on. So from the techni technical engineering point of view, we are always looking for um, uh, solutions and we are happy when we have problems to find a solution. And I think it's very exciting uh, area in front of us, both for researchers and for education, but also for industry, for the society. So I'm uh, really looking forward to next period. And uh, I hope that will happen also in our cooperation here, uh, uh, Chalmesh and companies and uh, uh, the area. Uh, so I have learned here, people say very often West Sweden. So I learned, okay, there is also West Sweden, it's not only Sweden. Uh, but it's, uh, of course, it's uh, Gothenburg and West Sweden and Sweden, it's in the entire world uh, uh, which we are improving. So by that, I hope we will meet um, very often in the future, and thank for coming today, and have a great uh, midsummer. Thank you.